Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 78 of this series. This series of lectures is based on my book Manual of Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common and Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find the book on Amazon at the link below. Today we are still on chapter 11, intravenous fluids, chemistry and indications, and this is part 3. We're going to talk about crystalloid intravenous solutions. In the previous lecture we talked about D5W, 5% dextrose in water, and of course it is a crystalloid solution. Today we are going to discuss isotonic saline, half normal saline, lactated ringer, and balanced electrolyte solutions. Isotonic saline, also known as 0.9 normal saline, normal saline, is the most commonly used crystalloid solution. Over 200 million liters are used annually in the US. The pH is 5.6, so obviously it is acidic. If we take a pure distilled water at 25 degrees, it has a neutral pH of 7. Now, if you expose this water, carbon dioxide is going to be absorbed. So that's what happens to isotonic saline, and upon contact with the atmosphere, the pH is going to be lower to around 5.6, but there are differences from solution to solution. It is well known that when we infuse large amounts of isotonic saline, we are going to have a non or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, this is not because the pH is acidic. It's actually for other reasons. And these reasons are, number one, you are diluting the buffer systems in the plasma. So you are diluting the bicarbonate. Also, you are causing volume expansion, and this will decrease reabsorption of bicarbonate in the proximal tubule. Lastly, when you are giving a lot of chloride, you're increasing the activity of the chloride bicarbonate exchanger, or pendrin. We talked about that in detail when we discussed metabolic acidosis. This exchanger exists in the beta intercalated cells in the collecting duct of the nephron, so basically you are going to absorb the chloride and get rid of the bicarbonate. Unlike lactated ringer, isotonic saline has no buffer base. It has a high chloride content, 154 mole equivalent per liter. This is a lot higher than plasma chloride, which is 98 to 106. Isotonic saline is used to expand the extracellular volume. It stays all in the extracellular space. So it's useful in hypovolemia, hypotension, chloride-sensitive metabolic alkalosis, and hyponatremia when you have hypovolemia. If we give a liter of isotonic saline, it's going to expand the intravascular compartment by 250, and it's all of it, the rest of it is going to stay in the extracellular space. So 250 in the intravascular compartment and 750 in the interstitium. So this is a very good choice for patients requiring fluid resuscitation as the case of sepsis. We'll shift gear now and talk about 0.45 normal saline or half normal saline. So this is like taking 500 ml of sterile water and adding that to 500 ml of isotonic saline. So when we give a liter of 0.45 saline or half normal saline, we expand the intravascular compartment by only 167 ml as opposed to 250 when you're giving normal saline. So for initial resuscitation, say in case of sepsis or hypertension, it's not a good solution, it's not a good it's a choice, but it's good for optimization and stabilization later. For example, you get someone with diabetic ketoacidosis, so you're given three liters already of normal saline, now you are going to give D5 half normal saline for the optimization and then stabilization. It will help prevent hypoglycemia because you have the D5 and with the half normal saline you're going to uh, prevent hyperchloremic uh, non-anion gap acidosis and you're going to prevent hypernatremia. 
Also, it can be useful in the management of hypernatremia, especially if hypernatremia is not severe, because it provides free water. Half of it is free water. Obviously, if you have severe hypernatremia, you're going to use 5% dextrose in water. What about lactated Ringer or Ringer's lactate? Um, uh, surgeons uh, like this solution, and it's a great solution. Um, it is a buffered crystalloid solution. It has lactate. It has sodium lactate. Obviously, it does not have lactic acid, and it does not cause lactic acidosis. To cause lactic acidosis, you need the acid. You need hydrogen. It doesn't have that. Now, LR, or lactated ringer, is appropriate for initial resuscitation. Um, it's on par with the isotonic saline, but it's slightly hypotonic, okay? It's 272 milliosmol per liter versus 308 for isotonic saline. So if you have hyponatremia, go with isotonic saline. Now, also, um, if uh, you have chloride-sensitive metabolic alkalosis, you want to go with saline because you want to provide uh, chloride. For patients with uh, hyperkalemia, especially if you have potassium 5.5 and higher, uh, LR has some potassium, so also it's not a good choice. Uh, other than that, um, it has a lower chloride content, and uh, it's a very good choice. Patients with hepatic failure may not be able to metabolize lactate into bicarbonate, uh, so we have to be careful about that. Um, and uh, this solution has, uh, like we mentioned in the previous lecture when we uh, provided all those tables, it has lactate, has potassium, and has calcium. And remember, it has a lower chloride content, so sometimes it's appropriate to switch from 0.9 saline um, which you gave in the resuscitation phase to LR, for example, in the optimization phase and then maintenance. What about plasma light A? Plasma light A is an example of a balanced electrolyte solution. So balance, the pH is 7.4, so it's close to 7. It's not acidic. The osmolarity is close to that of isotonic saline, so it's close to plasma, but the chloride content is significantly lower. This is a balanced electrolyte solution because in addition to sodium and, and uh, chloride, it has potassium and it has magnesium. Also, it has 27 mol per liter acetate and gluconate. So, the same way we said that 0.9 saline and LR are appropriate for initial fluid resuscitation, you can use plasma light A. It is more expensive, of course. It is touted as a more physiologic solution. But if you have chloride-sensitive metabolic alkalosis, stick with 0.9 saline. If you have hyperkalemia, you don't want to use LR or plasma light A because simply they contain potassium. Now we're going to enter an area of debate. What is the best crystalloid solution? Is it isotonic saline or is it LR or is it a balanced electrolyte solution like plasma light A? Now let's start with some smaller studies. Several observational studies have raised concerns about isotonic saline due to its high chloride content. And that can cause non or normal anion gap hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis when used in large quantities. So you're not going to run into problems if you're using 500 ml or 1000 ml. Uh, the study by Shaw et al. conducted a retrospective. So again, when we say retrospective observational study, we're raising hypotheses we cannot make cause and effect. So although the study has 30 or had 30,000 patients undergoing major abdominal surgery, the in-hospital mortality was 2.9% in the patient who received plasma light A and 5.6% in the isotonic saline. It was statistically significant. So this is one of the few studies that actually showed increased mortality with isotonic saline. Again, retrospective, observational. It's interesting, but you cannot make a cause and effect. You cannot say, oh, isotonic saline killed patients post-major abdominal surgery. That would be absolutely incorrect. Complications were more common in the isotonic saline, including acute kidney injury requiring renal replacement therapy, post-operative infections, 
acidosis and blood transfusions. The reference is right there on the screen. Another observational retrospective analysis of 110,000 patients with SIRS. Uh, those patients received fluid resuscitation with crystalloid and they examined the association between chloride concentration due to administration of chloride load and hospital mortality, in hospital mortality. After adjustment for severity of illness, mortality did also increase, increase with increasing chloride load in administered intravenous fluids when uh, the uh, chloride concentration was more than 105 mL equivalent per liter. The odds ratio was 1.094, and you have the confidence interval on the screen. You have the reference also on the screen. Again, you cannot make a causal relationship. Here we have a meta-analysis of 21 studies involving over 6,000 patients. They were critically ill or surgical patients, and they received crystalloid for resuscitation. High chloride crystalloids were defined as chloride content over 111 mL per liter. Now, based on chloride content in this meta-analysis, there was no difference in mortality. But there was a significant association between high chloride content and unfavorable outcomes, including, again, acute kidney injury, hyperchloric metabolic acidosis, and time on mechanical ventilation. So you can start to form a picture here. Mortality may not be any different, but if you're giving too much chloride, maybe acute kidney injury is going to be higher, and naturally, hyperchloric metabolic acidosis incidence is going to be higher. Other studies have shown improved clinical outcomes, meaning reduced incidence of AKI and lower mortality in critically ill patients receiving balanced solutions compared to those receiving isotonic saline. References are on your screen. Now, let's review two big studies, okay? Now, the SALTED study, or SALT Dash ED trial was published in 2018 in the New England Journal of Medicine. I recommend that you read the study, read the editorial. And the title of the study was The Saline Against Lactated Ringer or Plasma Light A in the Emergency Department, SALT Dash ED trial. They conducted the study in the emergency department on non critically ill patients. And these patients were given intravenous crystalloids in the emergency department before their hospital admission, and they were non-critically ill. They did not get admitted to the intensive care unit. It was a single center study, was unblinded, but it has a large number of patients, over 13,000, and it compared isotonic saline to lactated ringer or plasma light A. So you have isotonic saline for one group versus either LR or plasma light A. Now, median fluid volume wasn't that big. It was about a liter per patient, and there was no difference in hospital-free days, days alive post-discharge before day 28 between the two groups. So no, no difference in, uh, uh, really in mortality. Now, balanced solutions were associated with lower incidence of major adverse kidney events within 30 days, or make 30 and that was statistically significant. Patients with higher creatinine, equal or above 1.5, had even a greater benefit with balanced solutions. Now, we have to say that most patients in the balanced crystalloid group received LR. Only 4.7% received plasma light A. So this is like a comparison between 0.9 saline and LR. Now, if you ask about the component of the MAKE30, it is death, RRT and persistent renal dysfunction, doubling of creatinine, all, all of them uh, together. So here again, no difference in mortality, but if you put all of these together, uh, LR, I mean, I have to say LR was better than 0.9 saline for these non-critically ill patients when it, comes, when it comes to renal outcomes. Let's now discuss the SMART trial, also published in 2018 in the New England Journal of Medicine. It is the Isotonic Solutions and Major Adverse Renal Events Trial, or SMART. It was conducted in over 15,000 adult patients admitted either to medical or surgical intensive care units in a single center. Here again, we are comparing isotonic saline to lactate ringer or plasma light A here in critically ill patients. The previous trial was in emergency department, non-critically ill patients. 
The outcome, the primary outcome, was the same to make 30, like we just talked about. The medium fluid volume was also not very high, about a liter in the first seven days range, 0 to 3.5 liters. Most patients in the balanced crystalloid group received LR, again, 91%. So again, it's like a comparison between 0.9 saline and lactated ringer. The make 30 was again higher in the isotonic saline group. Okay, and you have the statistical results on the screen. It was statistically significant. In hospital mortality was similar. And the advantage of the balanced solution was more pronounced in the subgroup of patients with sepsis. So here again, um, LR or balanced solution one, whether in critically ill patients or non-critically ill patients. And uh, they, there is some criticism um, about these studies. Both of them were unblinded or single center trials. Data were censored at the time of discharge. The treating clinicians determined when to initiate renal replacement therapy. Over 90% of patients in the balanced, balanced crystalloid solution received LR. So this is essentially comparing isotonic saline to LR. You're not comparing isotonic saline to a balanced solution. The volume of fluids used was modest. But again, like I, I think what I take personally from this, when you're resuscitating someone, use LR or 0.9 saline, but don't give liters and liters. Uh, switch after that to LR. You don't want to very high chloride content because it maybe is possible that that is associated with adverse renal outcome. And this debate will never end. There will be more and more and more trials. So stay tuned. I'm going to stop here. See you in the next lecture.